Yo, hey guys, welcome to another video. Just gone blue sky now, so it's looking nice outside. I was gonna shoot a video uh, uh, later, around sunset time, but now I'm gonna shoot a, another Lightroom tutorial. Yes, you're getting another Lightroom tutorial for me today. Um, it's how to be a boss in Lightroom. I wanted to make this video um, if you kind of like starting out in Lightroom, don't know what the hell the controls are or, or like the tabs and the sliders and stuff. And I'm going to show you some awesome tips and some features that you can find in Lightroom that not many people know about. Um, stuff like the tone curve and the gradual filters and the kind of mask stuff that you can do in Lightroom. For example, like the clone tool and stuff, you can get that in Lightroom. It's not just Photoshop. So yes, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go through, I'm going to pick a photo here from San Francisco. I'll go through the edit and then we can pick up on some cool features to show you guys. Yes, let's go. I hope you like my new haircut, by the way, because it was getting very long. Anyway, let's let's start the video. Okay, so we're gonna go into Lightroom. If you've been kind of editing already and you've been using like Fiesco Cam and Snapseed and that, this is just a little bit further. This is, this is gonna raise the bar a little bit higher for your editing um, if you go into Lightroom. Even though those mobile apps can do quite a lot, I mean, they're, they're really just filters. You can mess about with the exposure and stuff in the shadows, but it seems a bit kind of fake. So Lightroom is it's definitely gonna allow you to edit every single detail that you have in your photo. There is a few things I can recommend before you start editing. Always shoot in RAW. Make sure your camera is the highest possible quality you can go to when taking stills. It doesn't really matter if your photo is overexposed or underexposed because this is the editing software and you can fix that um, when you go throughout your edit. But yeah, make sure those are, are ticked. You're shooting in RAW and it's the highest kind of you know you get like extra fine or fine quality just make sure it's at the highest what that means is when you're shooting raw you can the colors extend a bit further in jpeg you can't really move about the colors that much in raw definitely the dynamic range is a lot broader so you can edit highlights and shadows right let's get into this photo then i've gone ahead and chose this photo this is san francisco um down at Land's End near Sutro Brafts, very awesome area so we're going to hit the develop tab up, up top and get started right so on the right hand side, some of you might be familiar um, with this already, but I'm just going to go through it quickly. We have your basic here, which is going to have your kind of temperature and your basic things you can go through, like exposure, highlight, shadows, um, and so and so. And then we scroll down. Um, you've got tone curve here, um, which is very important, but we'll get into that later. Um, you've got your HSL bars, huge saturation and luminance. These are very, very important as well. Split toning, detail, and then you get down to grain and vignetting and camera corrections and stuff like this. So, we're gonna start by looking at just normal basic. We're gonna go ahead and go for a cooler tone here, I think. Tin out of it just a tad. I'm gonna take down exposure just a bit. Highlights, now, the way I like to use highlights is I like to bring them right down so we can get kind of the more detail out of the clouds up here. So if I were to put highlights at the other end, um, quite a lot of detail is lost, so we come down here and you can see we get a little bit more detail. Shadows, shadows you can either go down to get more uh, darkness in the photo or come up. I normally choose to come up with this photo just and get more detail in the waves and throughout the sand and the people on the beach. Whites, I don't really mess with this as of yet. So we'll leave that there. Blacks, now we're gonna bring this down. So we can get a good feel of trying to get some mood into the photo. Clarity. This is just the basic at the moment, so I'm just going through this quickly. Clarity, I like to bring down. This is just my normal editing style. Let's bring that down about 25. Saturation of um, vibrance, we'll leave that. I like to leave that to the end. Now, th this is a cool one, right? So, I don't know if many of you use this, or you use this, or you don't know how to use it, and you're using it, and you're finding it cool. We're going to go for it right now. Tone curve is very important. So, at the moment, it's on the RGB curve right here, and you can put dots here and change whatever you want. Or you can click this little button here and it goes to the other one where you can adjust the sliders. So yeah, I like to do it where I can adjust the, the line instead. So what I do, as I've just done, I normally like to put two dots here. Some people put like seven up and down the line, and I you choose two, and then I adjust the ones which are already there on the top and bottom. So it's kind of like your exposure bar really. Um, going from highlights all the way through to midtones and then down to shadows and then blacks. So what I like to do is push the highlights a little bit up, bring the shadows and kind of the bottom of the midtones down like this and then kind of create an S curve and I like to add fade in the photo. You don't have to do this but it's kind of my style. Yeah, so push that up, 
to get some fade in there. Now, as you can see, that's changed the photo dramatically already. Um, if you guys don't know, before and after, you can do the shift tab, which is next to the enter, enter key on, on a Mac, and you can see the before and after. So already we have dramatically changed the photo and added some really, really dark, moody, um, enhance the beach, enhance the waves, and you can see more of the clouds in the photo now. So yeah, guys, this tone curve um, is really gonna help you kind of edit a lot of more aspects in your photo if you actually use it. Because I was, I was afraid of this when I first had Lightroom. Um, it's like a thing where if you click it, everything's gonna go wrong in the photo, but I think that's how you learn. You're just gonna have to make your own kind of sections in, in the curve and move it around and see what it does. But the main kind of thing people do is trying to make this kind of S curve here, which you can see. And as you see down below here, you got the RGB. So this curve is actually editing the red, green, and blue primaries in this photo. Um, and you can choose single ones. And then again, you can go in here and make your curve. And you can see you can push some red in the photo, kind of make it turquoisey. Go down here, adjust the midtones and the shadows and stuff like this. Um, so you can edit the red primary, the green primary, or the blue primary. Right, so another tip here in Lightroom. So after you've done the tone curve, make sure all of these on the right hand side here, all these little arrows, as you can see, are ticked so they show what they're hiding. Make sure all of them are ticked down. So you can see everything and all the like little goodies you can get in Lightroom, okay? So this is the HSL. HSL means the hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue is such an awesome tool um, for editing. If you're kind of looking for either natural, unnatural, or uh, whatever style you're looking at, you can, you can achieve this with adjusting the hues. So as you can see in this photo, um, there's a lot of blue, um, green in here, aqua, and those kind of colors. Um, so as we go here, red doesn't really do much. The orange won't do much either. Yellow, let's see if that does something. Yeah, that does something to the beach. Now, these are all personal preference. I mean, you can choose whatever you want here, but don't forget, don't go fully like overboard with this because otherwise your photos are gonna end up very busy and they're gonna not look as good. Green, not really changing. Aqua, this will change quite a bit in the sea there. Let's keep it around here. Blue, you can go to that kind of turquoise color or you can keep it kind of neutral. I'm gonna keep it kind of neutral here. Purple not really doing much on magenta, I don't think so. So saturation, this is awesome as well, where if you want a certain color to pop, um, you can do that and then desaturate all the other colors within the photo. Again, personal preference, um, but it's a really good tool to help you kind of understand the image more. So in we go. Yellow, as you can see, the beach is getting desaturated there. And as we come down to aqua, that will desaturate the sea. Blue, in the photos, I tend to take the blue down. And now we're getting kind of a more towards the natural kind of look, but maintaining the mood in there, as you see from the original. Another thing I want to say about this, this is the original photo, raw photo taken on my Canon when I had it. There's no preset input on this. You might have seen over here that I have the Viesco Cam film set when I bought it. I used it for about a couple of months and I just didn't use any presets because I think to really get the grips of Lightroom, you need to kind of go in and make your own preset. So in this photo, this is completely blank. There hasn't been any preset been put on it. So what we've done now is create this edit. And this is how I kind of work. I kind of pick one photo, do the edit, and then copy that, and then put it on another one if I have to. Um, I never put on a preset before, because with the preset, you don't really know what's been put on your photo, and you don't know how that's been achieved. So if you can make your own presets, then you know every single detail which you've gone through, and you can then copy that onto the next photo, or you can do it manually and put it on yourself. So I think that's a good way to actually try and learn Lightroom and then you can make your own presets without having the trouble of downloading other people's presets and getting them when you don't like them and you don't know how they were achieved and all this stuff. So this is purposely to like show you, you can easily make your own preset and you can easily edit in Lightroom. So now we go into the luminance, this is awesome as well. Now let's brighten up that beach a bit. Turn around there, aqua, brighten that, blue, we can bring this down to get more of the shadows in the clouds and stuff. And if it's going too blue, we can go back to saturation and desaturate that a little bit more. Purple, I don't think we'll do much. Now, as you can see, this looks quite gritty at the moment, this photo. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to split toning. This is another awesome tool, which can add a lot more to a photo. So this is the hue bar here. So a bit like up here, you've got a hue bar. It's the same color as red to magenta. And in between, you've got all your blues and greens and stuff. I normally tend to go kind of 225 on this, so around the blue to make the sky a bit more natural, you know, blue sky. 
And then in the shadows, I tend to go around 40, which is kind of the orange um, to yellow. So if we bump that up, now we've got this nice warm tone coming through. And that looks pretty awesome. And you know, personal preference again, you don't have to do this, you can whack it up all the way up here, but it's gonna look quite horrible. Um, so find a good balance for your photo and find colors that really go together. So if you're gonna use orange, blue counter counteracts that really well and you get kind of this look, um, which is quite popular nowadays, but we're gonna keep it quite neutral and casual here. Sharpening, um, you can do this. I tend to put on about 20 more. And with the A7R2 now when I'm shooting, I, I don't really need to put any sharpness on because <laughs> the images are unbelievably sharp shooting at 42 megapixels. Um, noise reduction, I don't really like this, but it is there if you want to use it. Now, these are lens corrections. If you've got a lot of chromatic aberration, chromatic aberration is the kind of purple line you see around something which is highlighted. That's very common on fast lenses. So you can take that and it will remove some of it, but if it hasn't removed all of it, you can come back up to the saturation bar and lower the purple and magenta and that will get rid of it. Um, just make sure purple and magenta aren't your main colors in the photo, otherwise that will ruin the main subject. Enable profile corrections. So if you have a wide lens, it's quite good. If you're shooting kind of down below to 16 or even 10 or even eight millimeters, you can whack on this um, and choose your make model. So if you go to the, the thing that was shot on this, was shot on a 50 mil 1.8, but you can choose, say for instance, 816 Sigma, and when you apply this, it cuts out the distortion on the side. And you can have bars here where you can adjust the distortion and the vignette around the lens. So that's pretty good. Um, just another tool to help you if you want to make your photos look a little bit more natural when they were shot on a wide lens. Um, and down here you can do some vignetting and stuff. Right, okay, this gets really exciting now. Because I've been through the basic, been through the tone curve, been through the HSL and kind of the sharpening and the lens corrections and stuff. You're probably thinking, oh, okay, we're done, but no, this is where it gets exciting, guys. You see these things up here. So this is um, probably familiar to a lot of you. It's just the straining tool. We don't need to do that. It looks pretty good anyway. Now, this guy is the clone tool. Now, this is why I said you don't have to go into Photoshop. Um, if there's something annoying you in the image, <clears throat> and if there's something distracting you in the image, and you want to take it away, um, you don't have to export and then go to Photoshop. You can do it all in Lightroom. So um, at the moment, I've got it on heel. Um, which means you can select an area. Let's say this little dude down here, you can select an area, click it, and bam, <laughs> he's gone. It kind of does it automatically where it selects, yeah, it selects the circle here um, where it thinks the best kind of pixels to go back to that image and get rid of the person, um, which is very good. You can move it around, you see as that other part is moving as well. Um, so if you want to get rid of something, that is a very easy and quick tool to use. Don't forget you can choose the feather size and stuff um, I like to use quite a big feather because it it doesn't make it look so sharp um, of an outline. It's good to feather your stuff so it doesn't look obvious that it's been done. Um, so you can either go to the clone tool and now you can choose. And the clone tool is actually cloning a bit of the beach. So you can even put another man there if you want. It's actually cloning pixel for pixel and putting it back where you originally selected your area. They both work pretty much the same um, but there is differences with them which probably are technical and I don't really know what they are, <laughs> but either all works well. So we're gonna get rid of this guy because I'm gonna show you something else in a minute. So once you're done, press done. And now you can't even see that there was a guy there. Doesn't look bad, does it? The next button here is the red eye correction. We don't need to use this because we're not working on a portrait. Now this bad boy, this bad boy is the gradient, gradual, grad, 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 graduated filter, boom. We're going to select this and it's going to bring up another tab here. So you've got exposure, clarity, sharpness, all this, temperature and everything. So now it's going to give you this little cross thing on the screen. Now when you click and pull down, you're going to get these three lines. Now when you've pulled down, downwards, right, um, it's selected the area above that. Say if you pull upwards, it's going to select the area below it, okay? Just delay that one. So we're working on this one. So it's selected the area up here. Now these lines, depict the feather. So if you do like this, you go over to exposure, bring it down, it's going to make a harsh line here. So we want to keep that quite feathered so it doesn't seem obvious. So we're going to keep it like this. Now we're going to go right to the clouds. This is, this is what I tend to do on every photo if it's got moody clouds in. Now you're going to lose your shit on this. So as you can see, if you hover over the little button and it's mask at the top end, right? Watch this. Pull down exposure, 
boom, instant mood. We've just created instant mood. <laughs> How sick is that? First time I like did it and used a graduated filter, I lost my shit. This like. This graduated filter, it is so good. Not many, not many people know about it. So if you use this filter, you're gonna add so much more creativeness and mood and style within your photos. You can play around with this so much, right? Say if you even got a portrait and you, you kind of want this dark coming in from one side, you can graduate that filter, bang a load of um, shadows and blackness in the one side and have brightness the other side. You can really get creative with this. So we can adjust this, pull it down or pull it up, or we can go all the way down and kind of make the whole sky moody but I kind of like this transition into the highlights here. Don't obviously go too dark because it's going to look um, unnatural. Get a good balance there. We can also adjust the blacks to get it to match the rest of the fade. Now we've got this nice mood coming in from the top. We're going to go over to, um, we're going to skip this guy here, I'll come to that later. We're going to go to this brush here. This will bring you another menu which is similar to, well it's exactly the same to the graduating filter and you're going to get this brush here. Now I've, let me zoom in this. Let me make it bigger so you can see what I've done to the brush. So you can see around the brush, um, you've got this rim around it, and that's the feather again. Um, you can change the feather size by going down here. You can change it, but keep it quite big because obviously you don't want that sharp line between what you're editing. So now what I like to do is select the highlights like this, and you can go back and hover over the button to see where you've masked. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can select some highlights in the waves as well and we're going to bump the highlights to get it really popping now. You can adjust exposure, but exposure is always the one that is going to you know, white out your image like that, which looks horrible, so we'll keep exposure there. Whites, we can bump these a little bit. So now you can see the image really coming to life here. Highlights a bit more, boom! And we go before and after. Really got this mood here now. Now I'm just going to go down to Tone Curve and bump the shadows a little bit because the beach is looking a little bit gritty there. Um, to fix that I can even go to the luminance and bring it down a bit so it's more soft. Don't forget clarity is right down, it's still looking gritty so we can even reduce that clarity a little bit more. We can put a little bit more fade in. Now, this is not finished yet, <laughs> okay? So we've done the top of the image which looks awesome right now. Now we're going to select the gradual filter again and pull it up from the bottom like this. This is what I like to do with my images as well. Now we're going to, boom, do this here. We're even going to add more mood. This is quite good if you don't want a vignette and you don't want the whole kind of image to be vignetted around all the corners. This is good for maybe selecting one corner or two corners and you don't want all of them selected in the vignette. So this is another good thing. You can pull up this and just, boom, get that mood in there. Looks sick. Remember to extend these to get more feather in there so it doesn't look like a harsh transition. Fade the blacks even more, and there we go. As you can see, the exposure is kind of down, so we can even go over here and bump the exposure just a tad to get it back to normal exposure, which looks sick. This Now let's go back to this guy, a little circle here. On this image, it doesn't really need it, but let me just show you what it does anyway. You can pull a circle here. Now whatever's in that circle, as you can see, it's highlighted that. And this is quite good for if you want to get more kind of in-depth, if you want to highlight a certain place in the image, this is very good for it. So let's just show you here. I can put the highlights up here. Or this works as um, another vignette where you can, I've got ticked invert mask, which means it's inside. Um, and you can untick that and obviously then it will do the outside of the image. So pretty straightforward. But we'll leave this for that one because it doesn't really need it. Press done on this. Go back to the temperature. Boost it a tad. Get more life in the photo. Oh, it's going to come up a little bit. We left the saturation vibrance um, to the end because normally to the end you can decide whether you want to desaturate your photo or saturate it more. In this case it looks pretty good already. Um, but my style I like to desaturate a bit so I normally do minus 20. And now it's looking the bows. Uh, a few other things, you can come down here and add some grain, you can make it really vintage and add some grain like this. I tend to only add about 20 to 30. Keep it 25, don't really want to mess with dehaze. Oh, one more thing you can add is go back to the brush and just brush in the waves here or wherever you want more sharpness and clarity in the photo, you can bump the clarity just a little bit so you can get those waves to really pop. Add some contrast in there, just a tad, don't do too much some more whites 
and there we go, we've got the main part of the image looking really nice and still faded. So there we go guys, pretty sweet. <laughs> All right guys, so there we have it. Um, that was pretty my rundown on every little detail you can do in Lightroom with these pretty awesome buttons up here and just be really creative with it and use them to your advantage with your photo. And with this, you can get, you know, a good real connection with whoever you're showing it to. Um, people gonna look at your photos like, wow, man, that's, that's a nice photo. It's all Lightroom, bro. So these kind of features in Lightroom are really gonna kind of enhance and push your creative style that much further when editing a photo. So guys, I just really wanted to make this just to let you know on how to edit your photos to the full extent that Lightroom can go to. I mean, we've, we've created pretty much a whole new kind of feeling and mood with this photo. If I put up the before and after here, you can definitely see like the with the graduated filter coming down from the top and the graduated filter coming in, coming in from the side, your eyes will be drawn into the center of the image and damn. Also guys, you don't have to follow all my colors and stuff. With that, you can choose your own colors and you can choose whatever style you want. You can either go for cool or warm or tints or whatever you, whatever your photo editing heart desires. I mean, but just want to show you those features guys to really, to really kind of push the creative editing within you. So yes guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, this week I'm planning on shooting some more Sony A7R2 visuals. Um, hoping to do a sunset video and hoping to do um, the Sony A7R2 paired with a 50mm 1.8, the little Canon lens I have, I think that's going to be really interesting. Um, as you saw, little snippets of it in my Wales vlog, which I uploaded um, the other day, and I think pairing them together is going to make some interesting results um, for video. And photos, it's, it works awesome guys. So yes guys, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to watch some more videos from my channel. Here's how to keep a theme on Instagram. You can check that one out. Or oh, another one there. I haven't decided what to put there, but go watch the go watch the videos guys. Alright. <laughs> <laughs>